What is up ladies and gentlemen, CJ the Cheese DJ here and we are back with another top 7 list and today we are taking a look at top 7 weapons you guys should use in PvP. Now once again, you would have seen the top 6 items to use in PvP, this list is very similar in that it's based off our own opinion and what we've used during PvP. So do take that into mind as well, make sure to let me know what your guys list is down below and whether or not you agree with me. But without further ado, let's get into the list. So we're starting from 7 and working our way down to the number 1 weapon. Coming in at number 7, we have Flame Arrows. That's right, not the compound bow itself, but Flame Arrows. Flame Arrows are ridiculously powerful. They are essentially a Wyvern's Breath in the same form of an arrow. You can actually see the damage numbers coming up on the turtle as we inflict it. The initial damage from the actual arrow itself is very small. However, the fire damage is based off the percentage of the creature's health. Now, herbivores do take reduced damage from flame arrows as well. So if you ever get into a fight with a enemy player herbivore, make sure to switch off using flame arrows and probably use one of the other weapons further down on this list because they do take reduced damage. But flame arrows are great for melting heavy carnivores and just melting through enemy players as well because the flame arrows deal the extra damage over the percentage of the health and it's over a certain length of time. I believe it's six seconds off the top of my head for the flame arrows continuous fire. We're going to be able to see if we can hit that Diplodocus. No, we're not. But these things have incredible range on them as well. You can see that's a Giga up there and because it has even more health, it suffers 100 points of damage. And oh god, this could be a very big problem. So you're easily able to attack and deal a lot of damage to teams with a lot of health. You can see this Basilisk here in front of us and we're going to die. So, like I was saying, flame arrows are definitely the way to go when it comes to combating large carnivores and even enemy players. You can see just how much damage we are doing to this Basilisk with the flame off our arrows. It is ridiculous. Like I said, the higher the health, the more damage they will actually take. Now, number six, we have the sword. Now, this was a very tough one to come up with a decision with because it all comes down to your personal preference on this one. I prefer swords over pikes, but that's just me. Essentially, you do want a good melee weapon to come into play here because it doesn't utilize ammo. It just utilizes your pure strength. Now, you can currently see here we're only dealing 36 damage with our sword. That is because we don't have a very high melee damage and our sword is only primitive. However, if you do get your hands on a Mastercraft level sword or even higher and you do have a higher level amount of melee damage, you can dish out some incredible amounts of damage with the sword. So it's definitely worth noting and definitely a weapon you should invest in. Same goes for pikes. However, swords do deal more damage than pikes. The only difference is that the pikes have the extra range over the swords. That is why a melee weapon slash the sword comes in at number six. At number five, we have the Simple Pistol. Now, the Simple Pistol is a very good gun. A lot of people undermine it, but the matter of the fact is that the Simple Pistol is a great weapon to use. It has a six slot ammo cartridge, and it is very cheap to make the bullets for the Simple Pistol. All you need is simple bullet ammo, and I'm pretty sure it's a single metal ingot and three gunpowder, I believe, off the top of my head. But it is a great weapon to use on players. Dinos not so much obviously because they take the reduced 30% extra damage. But you can easily snipe players off dinos. And if you miss the first shot, well you can follow up with another 5 more shots. And in my opinion, the simple pistol is better than the long neck rifle. Because you can easily attach a scope to the pistol. It has the same range as the long neck rifle. But it is actually falling a little bit short than the long neck rifle. But you can essentially see players all the same from the same distance. And it's a great weapon to use to knock players off their mounts. Now obviously like I said it's easy to make the ammo. And it's also very fast to fire. So you can easily empty a whole round out on another player. Now if you do get into close quarters combat you can easily switch it up and use the pistol for close quarters combat. It deals just as much damage and it's just as useful in close quarters combat. But that is why the simple pistol is number 5 on this list. At number 4 we have the big bad boy gun itself, the rocket launcher. This weapon is absolutely awesome to use in PvP. Not only does it deal a crap ton of damage, it also does explosive damage. So it does damage to the surrounding creatures or players or structures that are in the area. 
However, do take note that if there are turrets in the area, the turrets will actually shoot down your rockets, making them useless pretty much because the turrets will shoot them down, causing the rockets to deal no damage to anything in the area. But these things are absolutely fantastic to use. The only downside to them is I think they can only fire about 10 or so rockets before their durability gives up and they break. So they can be a little bit costly, which is the main reason why they are higher up on this list than some of the other weapons. They can be costly to upkeep, but if you do find a good blueprint for a good rocket launcher, then you can easily make a rocket launcher last 20 to 30 shots. And these rocket launchers are easily able to blow into metal bases, enrage giggers, and just cause a crap ton of damage to anything in the area. They're great to use. The only downside, like I said, is their cost. Their rockets themselves as well cost quite a bit of ammo. Uh, quite a bit of resources to make and the rocket launcher itself also costs quite a bit of resources to make but other than that it's just a great weapon to take down enemy players enemy dinos enemy bases even just like i said make sure that there aren't actually any uh turrets in the area and you should be all good now if you're not very satisfied with the rocket launchers drop off you can see that the rockets slowly drop the further they travel you can invest in the homing rockets and those homing rockets actually travel in a straight line however you can't actually home in on them i guess you could say it's very strange but i wouldn't recommend building the homing rockets you're better off just going with the straight up rockets and that is why the rocket launcher is number four number four on the list comes in with the pump action shotgun this weapon wrecks players and teams alike. Now you can see here we're currently running a primitive shotgun and this alone is dealing 32 damage per pellet. This absolutely wrecks everything. It is one of my favorite guns to use in PvP and if the creature is actually larger than it normally is, like say a Giga or a Rex, you can actually unload from quite a distance away. As long as all your pellets hit the target, that target will actually take the damage. You can see from this range, we are still able to hit 64 damage. Even that, look at all those pellet shots coming up. It is nuts. You can easily use this as a ranged weapon. However, you will probably waste some ammo if the target is smaller. But you can see this poor Diplo is actually suffering our damage from a large range. Now, if you're unhappy with the tactical visor that we have on the shotgun, you can easily switch it off to a scope and the scope actually makes it a little bit easier to aim for yourself and you're easily uh, able to line up those shots. Even at this range, we are still able to hit the Diplodocus for insane amounts of damage. You can easily kill a player with one shot of these shotguns. Now, a lot of the time you can actually find high level blueprints of this shotgun in the area as well, especially on Ragnarok, and that just makes it so much easier for you to take down players and teams. And these guys are just absolutely nuts to use in PvP, and I would definitely recommend using shotguns over any other gun in PvP alone. The shotgun ammo itself isn't too difficult to create. I think it's nine, sh nine metal ingots and I think six gunpowder to create a single shotgun pellet. So that's not too difficult to farm up. And the shotgun itself as well is not too difficult, mainly utilizing polymer and metal. So you can easily just grind up some organic polymer from the volcano or from penguins and you'll be set with a very good weapon to use in PvP. And like I said, if you're not happy with the scope attachment, you can switch it off to the hollow attachment, even the red dot attachment. And if you're still not satisfied with that, you can swap off to the flashlight attachment if you want a little bit more light when you're going through those bases. But like I said, you get headshots off on players with this gun and they'll easily be dead in one shot. Even without the headshot and you have a decent shotgun, one shot is all it takes to kill a player. Now the weapon coming in at number two is the flamethrower. This is essentially an upgraded version of the flame arrows, which makes it a lot easier to target enemy players at close range. If you get grappled by a pteranodon or whatnot, pull out your flamethrower and make him say hello to your little friend. The flamethrower will easily wreck them, and you can see it only does till 2 damage to the target. However, it does deal the continuous damage over time, and this does work on players. Obviously, we can't 100% show you because we don't have any other players that want to cooperate with us at this time. But this is essentially an upgraded version of the Flame Arrows, and it is a very useful weapon in PvP, and just melting players and their teams at close range. You just pull the Flamethrower out, light them up, and they will die very quickly with this weapon. As well as that, the ammo itself isn't too expensive to create. Propellant is the main ingredient that you need to make the Flamethrower, and obviously if you find a higher level blueprint for many of these guns, you'll actually be able to do increased damage to the targets as well, which can make a huge difference 
to the total damage output coming from your flamethrower. That is why the flamethrower is number one on this list. And finally, the lucky last weapon on this list is none other than C4. As you would expect, C4 would be making an appearance on this list and it is a great weapon to use. Not only can you use it on players and teams if you so choose, I wouldn't recommend it because, well, it's a waste to use it on uh, enemy dinos. If you want to kill something really quick, strap some C4 onto it and it will die instantaneously pretty much. But C4 is mainly used for destroying structures, which is the main reason why it is number one on this list. Because above all else, Ark is about getting into the enemy player's base, stealing all their stuff, and getting away with it. That is why C4 is number one on this list. You know, you can easily take out a metal door in two strikes, in two charges of a C4. The only downside to it is that it is one of the most expensive weapons to create in Ark, but it also deals a decent amount of damage to Thames. You saw there we just did 672 damage to that Carbonemus, but you can easily use it to clear a whole room of Thames by just chucking a bunch of it down in the area. You'll see here that when we strap it onto this Giga, the Giga will take insane amounts of damage and it can easily kill it. Now the only downside to this is that obviously if you're not clear of the blast radius as you saw earlier, you will die. There is like no way that you will not die. So do take that into mind as well, but you can essentially place as much of this in an area as you'd like as long as it's not obstructed. You have a limit to 150 C4 in a certain area which provides you enough C4 to demolish pretty much anything. Nothing will survive 150 C4. Even our level 225 Giga did not survive that C4 blast. Granted, it was probably already on low health from the flamethrower itself. This guy easily has 18k health, and these guys are definitely not to be trifled with. Obviously, you're not going to use C4 to take out players' teams because it costs a lot to make, but you will be using it to take on structures and whatnot. So, that'll conclude today's list, guys. Let me know what you thought of the list down below. Let me know whether or not you agree with this list. But other than that, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to catch you in the next one. Yeah, this